We're just going to start rotating with the torque produced by the engine, right? And the main rotor mast, which we don't want to do, so we have to automatically apply left pedal when we're producing power. Hello, this is Alex from Anthelion Helicopters, and welcome to another YouTube video uh, with me teaching various aspects of helicopter flying. So today we're kind of starting off in the office rather than the helicopter, and that's really just to talk about uh, what we're actually up to today and sort of reasoning behind it. So. Helicopter flying, you know, one of the most basic maneuvers with it is hovering. Um, it's often misconstrued a little bit. People think, oh, the hovering looks really easy. But like learning to surf, hovering actually is probably one of the hardest things to learn uh, when, you're, when you're starting out. And that's mainly because it's pure mechanical control. You know, it's not like an when you're actually flying or when you're in an aeroplane where you've got wind blowing over the fuselage and control surfaces giving you stability. When you're in the hover, you have nothing. You have just you, for want of a better word, controlling all three axes that the helicopter is moving and when one goes out of uh, sync or out of whack then the other two go out of whack and then you over input things and before you know it you're all the way over at the airport at that point. So yeah, ironically it's actually one of the hardest things to learn uh, and that's really why I wanted to focus on it today as part of this video. Now I should bear in mind uh, that this is you know, purely my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm the be-all and end-all of knowledge of helicopter flying. Um, yeah, sure, I've been flying for 20 odd years now and instructing for a long time. Um, but a lot of these uh, parts of this video are my own hints, tips, tricks, if you want, for as a better word. Uh, just how I do things and how I've learned over the years that people learn the best. And, and hopefully you guys will uh, appreciate and uh, be able to offer some input as to what I'm saying. And if you agree or don't agree, as the case may be, then feel free to comment on it. Um, you know, I. I I think I have hopefully some decent experience behind me to, to share with you guys on, on how to put hovering together and uh, what to look for and uh, what makes a good hover and what makes a bad hover. Uh, and hopefully it will help you guys in your career. So uh, with, uh, with that being said, let's get into the aircraft and start this off. Okay, hello everyone, we're uh, back inside the aircraft now. Uh, we've just uh, done a traffic pattern over to Pad 3 at Long Beach Airport here, so we're just sitting on the ground. Pad 3, you'll see from some of the video that Ryan's shooting, is the longest pad here at Long Beach Airport. It's the, it's the one that we use for running landings. It was especially, uh, especially created for that, so it provides really good opportunity for that, which we'll look at in some uh, future videos. Uh, but for today, we're gonna talk about hovering. So, there's so much to this, and I'm gonna just try and break it down into some component parts, and you know, sort of best practice and uh, as we're going through it's kind of like how I would teach it on a demo uh, but as we're going through uh, we'll also put in some uh, some whole hints and tips and things to watch for as well now it's worth mentioning right from the offset that hovering is probably more about psychology uh, than it is about actually you know your mechanical ability to move the controls uh, and you'll understand what I mean by that you know as we go through it and, and, and and really, you know, I'm not trying to be a, you know, a psychoanalyst or anything like that, a Freudian person. That's really not what it's about. But the one, when you're, uh, you know, anyone who started to learn and anyone who's flown helicopters for a long time will understand, you know, that you could be your best friend or your worst enemy in this game. Uh, you could put so much pressure on yourself that you could talk yourself out of things. Uh, you can clam up rather than just relaxing and breathing and suddenly things happen a lot quicker and a lot easier for you. Um, so, you know, a lot of times it's about relaxing your mind as much as you possibly can and things start to flow. And we'll talk more about some tricks uh, that goes on, you know, uh, as, as we get talking here. All right, so I'm just going to pick the helicopter up into a hover and then we're going to talk about, you know, kind of how we approach uh, hovering in general. So, nothing could be more true than less is more with hovering. As you can see right now, we're going to start from the you know the, the base point here. This is me hovering uh, at about three feet off the pad, and you can see from the controls, I'm pretty much doing nothing. Although it looks like I'm doing nothing, I should say I'm actually doing something, but it looks, for all intents and purposes, like I'm doing pretty much nothing. And and, and in a way, that's a really good place to start when you're hovering. You know, it's uh, 
I always tell my students, you know, and I have done in the past, you know, start with literally doing nothing. Don't think you have to do something to start with. You want to actually feel like you're doing nothing to find the sweet spot there. Uh, but we'll go more into that later. Uh, but as you can see, it looks pretty easy right now. You know, if I bring it up to, oh, we're going to come up to, I don't know, about 15 feet off the ground, and we can sit here hovering. Now, when I'm hovering up here, I have to look down at the ground a little bit more at the side to get more of the ground reference going on. But I'm still pretty much staying within, you know, I guess one foot of where the point on the ground is, which is pretty good. Okay, so let's start breaking this down then and what goes into this hover. Uh, luckily, we were pretty calm on the wind today, uh, and so this should actually be pretty good, uh, but we'll talk about it. So basic three different controls with the aircraft. We have the pedals, the anti-torque pedals, which uh, control the tail rotor, which are your control movement around the vertical axis. Uh, we have the, in my left hand, we have the collective, collective pitch control, uh, which is, you know, pull up and uh, we go up and push down and we go down and you know so it's it's generally generally in a hover it's up and down but obviously in forward flight it's going faster going slower at the same time it's increasing pitch uh, on the blades collectively both together for uh, dulling it down it makes us go up and down uh, in a hover uh, and then we got the cyclic in my right hand uh, this is the one that always gets people in the hover to start with and if you can see I'm I call it flying with my fingers I'm literally flying it with two fingers and that's really just, uh, we'll talk about that a bit more, but basically it's, you know, the less I'm gripping it, the more I can feel it. I know that kind of sounds counterintuitive, but I'll talk about that more in a bit. So usually when we're breaking down a hover, we start with the easiest bit, uh, ironically the bit that people forget about the most, which is the pedals. So as you can see right now, I've actually got a bit of pressure on the left pedal and not absolutely even. And that's because I'm already counteracting the torque produced by the, you know, the engine and the main rotor to keep us in a straight line right now. If I was to push these pedals where they were absolutely even, look at that, we're just going to start rotating with the torque produced by the engine, right? And the main rotor mast, which we don't want to do. So we have to automatically apply left pedal when we're producing power, which is where we go like this. So we know counter counterclockwise rotating a helicopter like the Robinson and most American helicopters most European helicopters, uh, the opposite. Um, and the left pedal is what we call our power pedal. It's the one that's going to oppose the torque of the main rotor. When we're in a hover, you know, we're trying to just uh, keep ourselves in a straight line. Again, if you remember back to the days when you were learning to drive, don't look right by the front of the hood of your car. I call it a bonnet in England, you call it a hood, but you know, same thing. Always look as far ahead as you can so you don't over input everything. For my, me right now, I'm going to look at you know the C-17 building all the way over there, or the, uh, the Boeing jet, whatever it is, just look far away. And the first thing we do is I just tell people, just keep us here. Just keep us pointing in the same direction. Keep pressure on those pedals. And, uh, you know, they're very, very important with these pedals that you you actually put your balls of your feet on it. Do not put the flat or your arches of your feet on it. Again, you can't feel it. It's all about feel. Helicopter flying is all about feeling and feel. You need to, you know, to be able to do that. And the only way you can do it with your feet, really, is, is on the balls of your feet, where you can constantly use both feet at the same time to feel that pressure of which what's going on and that will help you a lot in the future uh, when you're trying to figure out what's going on with the wind or something else you know that pressure that you feel through your, your balls of your feet will tell you actually a big story about what's going on so be cognizant of that always keep pressure on both of the pedals it's not one or the other it's not one on one off it's both pressure all the all the time and you are moderating the pressure that both of your feet are actually producing on those pedals to give you the desired result so with that plethora of information now we will start doing a little bit of something actually that we you know actually teach so to start with we usually just take people around in a uh, in a in a, um, a left circle we break this down in the hovering with the pedals first mainly because we don't want to overload people i'm not going to say to someone if they've never done it before here you go have all the controls unless you'll see what happens that's not a recipe for success uh, that's a recipe for being overwhelmed uh, you know potentially i don't want to say it, having an accident but you know, obviously the instructor is good and that never happens, but certainly, you know, the student is going to go get very, very overwhelmed and you're going to get overwhelmed uh, if you just get given everything all together and get told to figure it out. So we start with the simplest, which is the pedals. And to go in a left, uh, a left circle here, again, what we're trying to do is we start with easing on to the left pedal, you know, look, pushing the left pedal, left pedal, keeping your eyes out front, long way. And then when we come about 90 degrees, we start pushing the right pedal just to stop us. The wind's not strong right now, so you don't have to you know, worry too much about that. Uh, obviously, when the wind's stronger, then it's going to start pushing the aircraft more, around more, and you're going to have to be more cognizant of it. So here we are coming into a tailwind right now. Again, just little, little move 
movements here, nothing much going on. Eyes out front, rotating round, bring it round another 90 degrees. Get ready with that right pedal to slow us down, and we're back in again. Again, keep positive control on both of those pedals at the same time. Don't just use one or the other. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Everyone always does this, they hold the breath. They hold the breath all the time, and they're like, this, but guess what, as soon as you hold your breath, because you, you, know, you, you start to tense up, your muscles start to tense up, you lose that light touch on the controls, and things start being like a bit, you know, a bucking bronco, which we don't really want. So keep breathing all the time, keep your yoga breathing going on. Um, so now we've done that left turn, that's the easier way of doing it, right? That's the power way of doing it, the power pedal we call it. It's the more controlled way, and if you ever get a chance, always go with the power pedal when you're doing your, your pedal turns, because you'll have more control over what's going on. We're going to do right pedal now, uh, which is essentially what we're doing, is just, rather than, you know, pushing right pedal, we're just sort of easing off the left a little bit, letting the torque take over. You definitely have to watch for the tail swinging a lot faster here, as we start to let the torque take over and then you know if the wind catches us in one of our wind azimuth regions which I'm sure you'll all learn about loss of tail rotor effectiveness then you can start spinning so just be cognizant of it going right is going to be a lot more hairy thankfully it's not here not today but again the same principle you know theoretically you push to the right although you're really practically speaking easing off on the left and then when you just before you've got to where you want to go, make sure you push the opposite pedal. Don't want to wait actually to that point, try and lead it by just a bit. And here we are, we're back round again. So there in a nutshell is the pedals. The second one we go through is the collective, which is the up and down. So right now we're pulling about 21 inches, 21 and a half inches of power sitting here in a hover. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna just pull it a little bit until we're, I don't know, 15 feet off the ground we just sort of squeeze it up you don't yank it you just squeeze it and you just go up a bit and here we are we're up here and then to come down to the ground we just ease it down a little bit and guess what we come down and then when we come about three feet off the ground we just lead it by pulling up just a little bit and then we're here so it's worth noting with this as well you start to see some of the interactions between the controls as I pull the collective, guess what? My nose wants to start moving to the right, like that, right? You see that? The nose is moving to the right. If I do nothing with the pedals, here becomes a lot of the skill with helicopter flying. We've got to look at these interactions. So as I pull up on the collective to go up, I got to push a little bit more left pedal to keep my nose straight. Need, you know, creating more torque, and uh, therefore I need more pedals to keep me straight. And as I come down, guess what? If I don't do anything, I'm going to start rotating the opposite direction, like this. Right, so now I actually have to use a lot of right pedal when I'm coming down, less power. All these little nuances and subtle nuances are really, really important. So as we go up, left pedal, and we're up. As we go down, a little bit of right pedal. And as we come down to the floor, we just lead it and we're up here again, right? Cool, all right, so then we just put those two together. We're gonna do a left pedal turn and we're gonna keep ourselves about three feet off the ground. Power pedal, remember, ease into that pedal, a little bit of a push. Again, keep your eyes a long way in front of the aircraft, always, always do that. And as you come around here, just anticipate any wind if you know any, so you have to come in on the pedals and anticipate that so you don't start swinging. You know, at certain points as well, we're gonna have to fiddle with the collector a bit to make sure we maintain a good level above the ground. All right, here we come back round to the center. <coughs> All right, now the fun and games really begins. So hopefully you guys got a bit of an understanding of those two controls, you know, a bit of the pedals, a bit of the collective. I don't want to do this for three hours in the aircraft, of course, or we'll run out of fuel here on the pad, so I'm trying to condense this into a you know, relatively short uh, time span. Uh, there'll be more opportunity to, to expand on it uh, other times. All right, the cyclic. So the cyclic is the big one that causes most people a lot of problems. And again, I, the first thing I say is essentially do nothing, right? You know, when I say do nothing because you want to feel what the aircraft is doing or trying to do. And again, like I said, fly it with your fingers. Make sure that your wrist and your forearm are on your leg, or your right leg. Uh, this is mainly to do with the fact that if you don't, and you're holding it like this, your propensity will be to start stirring the pot, I call it, and you can feel what happens here. You're gonna over-input everything. Forcing your arm down on your leg will stop that. You'll only be able to move your wrist and your fingers, which will minimal, minimize the chances of you over-inputting um, on the controls. So big, 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 big point. Again. When we're on the control, make sure that you fly it like this with your fingers. Don't put it in a death grip like this. You can't feel what the aircraft's doing. You have no idea. You want as much information as possible if you can from the control. So fly it with your fingertips. Put your fingers on it like this. 
don't be worried to start with your instructor will always have it for you i know it feels a bit weird but you will learn so much more by flying with your fingers than you will by gripping it really really hard so once we're in this position here, like I said, what we want to do is, is, is do nothing to start with. The big problem we're going to have is that we're going to react too much to something. So what's going to happen is if we if we don't just start with is this helicopter's going to start moving one direction like this, and then you're going to over input. You're going to correct the opposite direction, and it's going to go whoa like that. You're going to oh god, you're going to do it more over input again, and before you know it, we've got this huge pendulum effect going backwards and forwards. But that's called over inputting. And which gets worse and worse and worse and that will happen the same way forwards and backwards I mean, you know, we'll start doing this and then you'll think you're dead centre you're not, you're starting to creep forward so you'll pull back and God, hopefully don't pull back too much or the tail will go in the ground then you'll start going backwards you'll be like, oh God, that's too much push forward and again, oh, okay, too much forward and you know, before you know it we're doing the same thing forwards and backwards which is not going to be too good so same effect, you know and then the main, the real key point about this is be light on the control, and then you'll be able to feel what's going on far, far more than if you have a really hard hold on it. So, one of the you know the, one of the things I encourage with students to start with is you know with, with a lot of Robinson aircraft and a lot of helicopters, there's kind of like a dead spot right in the middle, uh, especially the R22. You know, you 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 do you can move the the, the cyclic like in a little circle on a sort of the width of a dime, I guess, or a quarter, and it won't actually do anything. And what I encourage people to do is kind of this is just my own personal thing is just move it a little bit to see just how much you don't you can move it without actually doing anything you know you'll be able to do this like i'm doing this now with the with the cyclic on the 44 if you can see and nothing's actually really happening there is a bit of a dead a dead travel here right in the center and that's kind of useful to know so that you can know you know by keeping your keeping your hands a little bit mobile moving your hands and fingers around a bit and it will also let you make you so you don't tense up to start with by just moving on purpose but you'll also know where the limits of that movement are i know that i can move it here and i'm like okay i'm not doing anything but if i move it a little bit out of there oh then it's actually doing something now and i know not to do that right so while there's no hard and fast rule with how to keep it in the middle the best way i always found is you know just move it a little bit so you can actually start to feel this is all feel it's all feel so move it a little bit and actually start thinking okay what is enough to move it versus what's enough enough not to and, and like i said inadvertently that will make it so that you're actually not uh you know tensing up on the controls and moving anyway at the same time you know this is uh, the cyclic is so much this where the psychology bit comes back in now so what we're talking about here with psychology is you know make sure when you're when you're actually doing it that you're breathing right just breathe and that'll make you relax and then your muscles won't tense up which really really helps you know that your instructor might try to distract you what what's what you'll find is that your conscious mind is not actually fast enough to correct things sometimes. By the time you realize that, oh, we're going too right, you're going, they're like, oh, we're going to correct. We're actually too late because now we're penduluming around, right? What we've got to actually really get to a point is that your subconscious mind takes over and corrects it without you even thinking about it to start with. And really how you do that is literally just relaxing and being slightly distracted by your instructor actually talking to you and, you know, you're thinking about other things and, you know, doing everything together. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times, relax, just intuitively feel out, don't overthink it, you know, and then over time, your subconscious will take over and you'll do it without even thinking about it, which is ironically what you want to do. Obviously, if you do want to move in a hover, then you can move left, right, backwards, forwards, but to start with, we're just trying to do nothing. And then usually at the end of the demo, when, you know, if some of the students got the, the, you know, the cycling down reasonably and we're not bucking Bronco all over the airport, and we're just, you know, we're sitting here and, you know, I can start to see the, the, the student actually subconsciously sort of twitching the cyclic in the opposite direction that the helicopter's moving before it does it. Then we actually go on all three controls together. And actually it really help us, helps as well, because that divides the brain into all these different controls and then you don't overthink one of them and that can actually help. So you, you put them on the, you know, the cyclic, the pedals and the collective together. And suddenly, before they know it, they're doing, you know, all three without even thinking about it because, like I say, their brain is being split between all of them. And that's actually a good technique to do as well, uh, rather than over-focusing on one of the particular controls, which can lead to that, you know, over-focus, over-pressure, and then, you know, it doesn't work as well as it should. So, really, you know, the big takeaways from, from this, um, I would say, you know, with the controls, number one, relax, right? Don't tense up. Breathe. Check in with your breathing be light on the controls when you're relaxed you are lighter on the controls you'll be able to feel the controls more you'll be able to you know anticipate a little bit more you know flying with your fingers enables you to feel the pressure and where the where the control is 
uh, actually with all of them, the balls of your feet on the on the uh, pedals, you know, use your fingers with the collective as well, so you can uh, to squeeze it rather than pulling it. All of these things will help you at the same time. Always look far out with a helicopter, don't look right by the aircraft when you're hovering. You know, take each control individually to start with, then put them together. Once you've done about 10 minutes of it, go and have a break. You know, go and fly a traffic pattern, go and have a rest. You know, your brain will need that rest. Go and just decompress, do something else, collect yourself, come back. Don't just hammer on it, hovering and, oh, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this, because that pressure and well, that fatigue will enable, you know, you'll start to tense up, you'll make mistakes. So know yourself, have a break from it, you know, uh, talk to your instructor, He'll, he or she will, you know, talk to you, calm you down. And before you know it, your subconscious has taken over and you'll be like, well, I'm hovering. You know, usually, uh, let's say, four to five hours to start with to get proficient at it, and suddenly it'll click. Don't get frustrated at yourself. That's never going to that's never going to help. Just relax. Say this is all part of the process. This is what happens. You know, we have to go through these 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 little games with ourselves to get there. But you will get there. I trust me. You will get there. We've all been there. We've all started this whole game, and we've all had to work through the nuances of hovering and not overthinking things and relaxing. And suddenly, it will come. Trust me, it will come. So I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed uh, this video today. Uh, I hope it's been of some use and there's been some subtle things there that you've picked up. Again, you know, I'm not the be-all and end-all of helicopter knowledge. Um, you know, a lot of these things I've just uh, picked up from years and years of teaching and that have worked for my students and, quite frankly, work for me. So everyone be safe out there, happy flying, and uh, we'll get back in touch with you soon and uh, ready for the next video. And uh, please subscribe if you like the video. And, uh, Show some comments about uh, what you'd like to see next time, what other uh, manoeuvres you want to see, and uh, we'll go on from there. All right, guys, stay safe, happy flying.